Hey everyone. Uh, if you've been enjoying this content, if you've been enjoying this uh, conversation, right, and you've just stopped in, hit that follow button in case you haven't done so yet. Make sure notifications are on so you know I'm going live. I do this seven nights a week. You were here on YouTube. Uh, I got content for you. So uh, check us out. Um, please kind of hit that follow button right this second. Let's make sure our social and chat for our social media. We got our Twitter um, where we're letting you know what's going on. Uh, we got our Facebook. Uh, ah, why do I keep fucking saying that? I really keep saying I don't know why. I don't have fucking Facebook. Um, <clears throat> yeah, Facebook. Uh, I, mean, I should probably get a Facebook so that I can probably just fucking say it. Uh, Discord. We have a Discord. Uh, so check out our Discord and um, uh, do that. And also, uh, that's the heart and soul of the community. Everything happens in our Discord. Once you be part of our community, YouTube's where you find the bots. If you missed anything, like, comment, subscribe over on YouTube channel. Consider becoming a YouTube member by hitting that join button. I'm going to stop that way. Or also subbing to the channel. Just subbing to this channel, right? Uh, $5 to do so helps out a ton. Thank you so much. Okay. I'm going to move on to our next topic, uh, which I'm like, oh, this is going to be the banger, but like, Apparently Kmart. <laughs> Kmart was where it's at. All right, fair enough. Thank you. <laughs> All right, so in France, Marine Le Pen will be heading uh, for a runoff election with Emmanuel Macron uh, for the presidency. Le Pen is a far-right populist who has been steadily gaining popularity over the years. However, the rise of her party uh, would not have been possible in America due to its two-party system. Should Americans be grateful for the moderating force of the two-party system? Are robust third parties uh, not worth the risk? Uh, so yeah, Marine Le Pen, like uh, just just a populist, right? Just a populist, not like a like a severe racist, like her fucking father. Um, but uh, yeah, she's on the rise, and she had, like got a massive uh, piece of the vote there um, in their system. They're run they're run up in the next two weeks, and I, I mean I don't know what the polling looks like, um, but she, it's not all the possibility um, that this woman could uh, take take the presidency and um so are americans better off with the system that we have that we always complain about um because it would make something like that a bit more difficult so i want to know what you guys have to think uh bam please um no i don't think that they're necessary i think we already have like a pretty diverse um place to discuss like your positions i think it's called the primaries um i don't think there's any like there's any narrative that would be popular in america if we just like had a place had their own party to um filter through their ideas um bernie for example is not a democrat sure he re like un later in his career he went up under the party but like bernie's not a democrat by any means but he still was able to get his ideas out to a demographic that thought they were popular um so yeah, no, like I think people who talk about third parties for the sake of having third parties is mostly useless. Like, in, I, I can't think of any position that Americans actually all agree on, but we just don't have a party that represents that idea properly. Okay, great. And not that you were long, but just for everyone else, um, please like keep your uh, introductions brief so we can get to the discussion. Jay Chow. Yeah, I completely disagree with one of the premises of the question is that if Marie Le Pen was in the United States running for president or whatnot, then she would just like be some sort of a third party. Uh, a two party system isn't going to be the one like preventing extremist parties from like taking control of like one of the main umbrella parties. I mean, we kind of already seen that in 2016 and Donald Trump. And we kind of already seen that with the Tea Party before that, in which they were able to really take hostage the Republican Party and do their own bidding in Congress. When it comes to uh, like the United the system in the United States, it, it has its own problems as well. Uh, France kind of has like this multi-party in like the first round, and then it becomes like a two-party thing in the second round. And we'd already see Le Pen has like almost close to 50% support in that like hypothetical two party, just like one-on-one -on -one against Macron, right? So Le Pen will probably do pretty well under a two party system. Uh, and like when it comes to the United States' system, it is, I think, dog shit, a uh, proportional representation based. It's a lot better. Uh, Dionysus, please. Uh, yeah, so someone who I, I feel like myself center right, uh, I got some populist uh, viewpoints, I got some of uh, uh, left viewpoints I share with my right ones, like I, I like the idea of like a universal um, healthcare, I like the idea of some sort of program of free college, but I also like my guns and I like my traditions. So I, I am politically homeless in America, uh, quite frankly. Um, I'm too far right for the left and I am, you know, not right enough for some of the right. 
Um, I, I think a third party system or the system like France has would definitely be beneficial for representation in America. But then again, I also really do enjoy how slow the process takes to change shit in America with the two party system. Um, yeah, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm torn on this one. Go ahead, Alec. So, uh, yes, the two party system would actually exacerbate the problem because not only is just one party now uh, the crazy party, uh, you would have a much larger swath. One of the problems with with having only two parties is the the voting infrastructure or the the primary infrastructure that they have a huge amount of power over and that they can really influence things. This tends to push things to extremes rather than act as a moderating force. This tends to um, like especially in the primaries and we can see this go out because of the way our electoral system works in the primaries you have to be as crazy as like you, as extreme as possible to appeal to some of your base and then when we get to the to overall uh vote uh you tend to move towards the center i do not think a third party system would make this um any worse than it is and in fact it might help in a lot of ways and help people have a more moderate choice uh, than they otherwise would. Uh, and to act as a, if the two-party system uh, does that, I feel is just false. So, ah, there you go. Uh, Tiberius, please. Uh, so I'm going to largely back up Chow, and it could be the complete answer. Uh, I've been on the record many times that when it comes to proportional representation, SUV voting or whatever, I get what it does. Like, it, it helps uh, voter confidence. It makes people actually more likely to vote it increases voter turnout all of that uh the problem is that it basically uh the long and the short here at least in the way that i see it is that when it comes down to electoral politics uh and i mean just getting elected is that you look at it on a spectrum in math right you have like your far right your center right your center your your left and then your your far left right and there's only two real gravitational poles that you can build a co functional coalition to go up against the other guys that is the left and the right that's why we consistently see wherever you are, whether it's in Britain with the Tories and Labour, whether it's in uh, France, which is a little bit more polarized, is that there's usually two big parties and then anything else is largely just kind of a hanger on. And they always coalition with the same people over and over and over. All of this does is make it to where if we're going to have this system here in the United States, yeah, you're probably going to see the Democratic Socialists of America be a frontline party that is represented with anywhere between 5 and 15% of the vote if they're doing really, really well. But are you ready to deal with the David Duke party on the other side of the aisle? And that's really all that you're going to see. Because in the end, is that unless there is an absolute crisis in the leadership abilities of these parties, in which we should be at now, is that you're not going to see Senator Sanders or uh, the DSA up as a major candidate, is that they're always going to have to concede for the more moderate liberal party to go up against the more moderate right-wing party. The reason why you see people like Donald Trump and Hillary Le Pen in France is because that is the new form that the right is taking throughout the developed world. Whether you are comfortable with that, whether you extreme that as extreme right, that is now normal right. Uh, and I'll end with that. Last year's name, please. Um, so one thing to keep in mind is that um, your electoral system is going to compensate for how hard or easy or hard it is to have multiple parties. Um, it's going to compensate for that with, with party discipline. So to explain what that means... Um, in Canada, there's f currently five different parties in our parliament, which is equivalent to Congress, roughly. So five different parties have at least some seats in it, which uh, might sound like there's more political diversity. But the thing is that the parties in Canada have a lot more discipline, which basically comes down to that the members are expected to not like have much less discretion to like disagree or vote against the rest of the party than American Congress people or senators do. Um, and conversely in America, because it's so difficult to have more than two parties, um, you'll find that parties are actually a lot more accommodating of diverse opinions within the party, uh, because they have to be in order to capture as many, um, you know, individual representatives from regions that have, that's have sort of a diverse, a diverse viewpoints. Um, so largely the, you know, you end up, it ended up kind of canceling out through, um, the diversity you don't get through having a, a, a lot of parties you get instead through having a lot of diversity within parties. Um, 
Now, is there is there like a net effect of like more or less political diversity? Probably a, a little bit. I don't know how, I have no idea how to measure that in America, but America is probably a little more, somewhat more politically stable because of the the two party system. But how much, I don't know. I don't know how to measure it. Maybe. Um, I actually don't really have a strong opinion on this. Uh, I, I guess it, third parties might not be worth the risk if you have like a dangerous candidate, quote unquote. But like other than that, I I really I don't have a strong opinion on this. I could be pulled either way to family. Hey, okay. Lewis. I still so say the same that I said like a couple of weeks ago. I support multi-member districts, um, all the way up to the federal level. I think, by and large, we give senators too much power to make decisions individually on their own, and the collaboration between representatives, between the the state representatives and the federal is very disconnected. I think multi-member districts is the way to go moving forward. Um, some states have problems with that, like Idaho, but by and large, I think it's a good thing. Did you tell us what that is? I don't know what it is. Uh, okay. Multi-member districts are where if you have a, a district, a, a certain district, multiple people represent that district outside of a singular individual. So you have multi multiple members representing a district. Every state has a different threshold that do this. So New Hampshire has a threshold of one to I think it's 10. New Jersey, for instance, has two. So you have two people representing each individual district. And that's shown to have a better represent, representation of what the electorate actually looks like in the state. And Thank that's you. a state legislature, right? Just to clarify. Yes, that. yes. And this is something because I think the should... House of, the House of Representatives right now is using single-member district model. Correct, which is why I would, I would advocate for the expansion to multi-member districts at the federal level. So one of the one of the things that uh, the two-party system... Uh, yet, when we talk about tolerance of our diversity within the thing... I, I don't know if that, that quite works out in America, at least not nowadays. Like, look at uh, the hate and vitriol for, uh, to uh, Cinema and Mansion, for example, for being much righter leaning Democrats, Democrats still, but the, the fact that, that they get so much uh, hate on them. Um, I don't and know wouldn't it, it be great that if there were multiple individuals representing that state? Sure, no. Cool. Would that be yeah, I, I would say that that's that's a, a great idea. But even further than that, I would argue that we need more parties than we currently have. More, uh, more uh, feasible parties. What uh, the fuck does feasible mean, though? Feasible like... means there's a a, a a chance of them holding a uh, a power within both local and federal government. Okay, like, so there are two ways. There are like two camps that you could approach proportional representation systems. Mm -hmm. There's one camp in which there's no threshold for a party to actually reach in order for it to be a legit party. There's no limit. So the example is like the Netherlands. They have like 11 parties within parliament or something. And it's like crazy sometimes. Like there's there's literally one party with one seat, multiple of them in the Netherlands parliament. Or you have a case like Germany in which they, they set a threshold where in order to actually get seats in the parliament, you have to reach at least 5%. So that way you could actually limit um, to the point where you could uh, get like the ideal, the theoretical ideal is five parties, which is what Tiberius said before. You have a far right, center right, center, center left, far left kind of a party. And, and they're, all, they're all vying for power. Yeah, and they had to also like, in terms of that, like make sure that these things are diverse in such a way where you have these parties collaborating with their states and communities, like, by and large so you don't have like say like a far right party that's just overtly concentrating within the far right like you still i i'm, I'm not saying you don't agree with this but i'm saying like you probably want some type of approach where you want to make sure that like the process of voting is in such a way where you have to like reach out to multiple different communities to to advocate for your vote as well, opposed to like all, yeah that's also like a weird thing that i've been wrestling with uh on federalism is that like we have national parties that at some times you you want to make them localized and then the local issues at some points like conflicts with the, the national issues so yeah. we're like you get somebody like mansion what Wick said before in which like nationally he agrees with a lot of democrats and he's a part of that party like that's that's kind of where he puts his camp but then when it comes to some local issues and this conflicts with like his his national position as a democrat then there are going to be some problems 
So then, like, what I would like is for local politics to stay local and for national politics to stay national to the point where, like, yeah, we can have national parties, but it really shouldn't mean much when it comes to, like, oh, well, what does it mean to be a Democrat in your small town of, like, 10? Yeah, it's probably going to mean, like, really little. Um, and maybe there's a conf confliction with that, right? Where it's like, are you advocating for your state or are you advocating for the country at large like and, and you hear like politicians navigate in this language in like weird ways where like on one hand you'll have um cory cucker sorry cory booker like say some shit of like yeah like this is what i want for my state in the state of new jersey this is great for new jerseyans and then the same hand he'll make some federal broad brush about marijuana and meanwhile he doesn't do anything in terms of like talking to state representatives about marijuana legalization and then but then he like still advocates for it and says, like this is what we want from new jerseyans and it's like but you don't talk like you're not doing anything you just show up in newark every once in a while sign something say a fucking speech and then go fuck off to washington well, that, like that's weird... one of the problems with a two-party system or a, a system where <laughs> the parties hold a large portion of the infrastructure of, of, of voting and things because the democratic party uh he is incentivized to do what they want nationally because they'll give him national resources right the the fundraising ability they have outside of the state that they can pour into his district pour into his race and campaign uh, is incentivized to to kind of kowtow to the party as a whole rather than the locality that's how that yeah works. and they're like and this is why you get people who think like like I'm, I'm at the camp of it now even though i was a cory booker simp for a lot of my life where it's like he's kind of politically worthless and it's like it's very clear that republicans in new jersey have can be competitive at the local level but then at the federal they're just irrelevant and it's like it's kind of ridiculous to me because then you it's like what what's a republican What's a New Jersey Republican going to do at the federal level? They have to toe the line. But they're like, what are you towing the line for? It's, a, I don't know, it's it's a weird... Well, th this is one of the problems here, because while I do advocate for a multi-party system above and beyond the two parties, uh, getting there and the actual, like, how we get to that is, is difficult. Because, again, especially in the way we, we work now in America, it tends, like... There is no incentive for the Democratic Party to split up or the Republican Party to split up because they'll have less influence, they'll have less power, they'll win less elections, and, and these are all well. They, issues. But I mean, Republicans still acknowledge that they have to broaden their electorate, though. So, like, it, it the the thing that kind of frustrates me with Republicans right now is that they understand that they have to diversify their electorate of the bases that they cater to, but some of their electorates are so fucking powerful that like any type of like catering to whatever you might consider like right of center is just like a bridge too far for a lot of people. Like, and then it gets, and then it got really weird in terms of like mandates, right? Where you had some Republicans that were just like, Hey, like, we should pr probably follow the science. I'm not ready to take positions on just being completely maskless in buildings and stuff like that. And then you get all like, you get like the, another base of the rights are saying like, well, these are just rhinos. And it's like, no, they're not like, like you can have like diversity in your lecture and opinions, but when it comes to like the rubber hitting the road, like you probably have to come to some type of consensus and Republicans are struggling with that on a lot of issues. Well, what happens if the answer? Okay. What happens? What is the like? Um, what is the significant difference if um, Mansion and Cinema, like, are a part of some other moderate centrist, whatever you want to call it, party? Like, what does that? What does that do? So, okay. Do you so, think it changes how they vote uh, on things? Uh, no. What? But it does change how the electorate responds and can respond to them. And so, what a multi-party system does is is one of the problems we have in America, and one of the reasons we have the system we, we have a lot of the issues we do is because not a lot of people vote. Most people don't. But in a lot of in, in one reason that that's the case, uh, not maybe the main reason. I don't know. I don't have the data to back this up, but I would suspect that one of the reasons is that they don't feel represented. The Democrat, Republican, all the same to them, right? And and so if you had a more granular system, a granular party system. Uh, there is a large likelihood that more people would participate in that system. And so you could have uh, a mansion or a cinema that um, if that's the will of the voters in the case, they wouldn't be beholden to the rest of either the Democrats or the Republicans. They would be able to take more nuanced positions and not feel that they're going to lose out on funding, not feel that they're going to lose out. And they can concentrate more on their locality. At least that's a theory. 
Um, Wouldn't they still I, I, like my my in my head? And maybe this is maybe like we're picturing it with like thirty seven parties. But in, in my head, like I still picture this playing out with there being um, primary parties on each side, like the 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 party with the big bucks uh, on the two polar ends, and even if there's like a few um, outsiders within that, like I, I would assume they would still be beholden to some sort of funding related to the 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 major party. Like, oh, imagine no. we know you're a part of whatever this is, but like if you want you want to be supported for re-election, like I see it playing out exactly the same, even if he's um, under some different party. Like, I don't know. Probably, so you could probably divide it by like if there's going to be a smaller party, then that party is going to have less funds than the bigger party. But when it comes to the actual electoral process of a smaller party versus a bigger party, the bigger party does not fund or subsidize the smaller party. No, oh, I'm not saying directly, that's, but I'm that's saying that's that, not like... how that would work. I, I, I'm saying that once you're elected, like, the fact that, uh, again, the only person I have to appeal to is Bernie. Bernie was an independent, but Bernie never went without, like, democratic support. Um generally he caucused with the Wait. democrats yes I yeah think. but okay. we can recognize but we can recognize that like if bernie sanders ended up being the president of the united states he'd probably be just as politically worthless as joe biden because he would still like cater to the structure that he's put under as president you know well something else with bernie is that if if we, if the united states was a proportional representation system then I, I would I'd be very confident in saying that Bernie Sanders would be in a party that is not the Democrats because the Democrats are more yeah. center left and Sanders is further left from that. And he wouldn't have to appeal to Democrats. He wouldn't have to appeal to moderates in order to get any sort of position or any sort of political legitimacy. Uh, and he would actually be appealing to a demographic and to a, a base of voters that actually want to support him. To the point where like all all these leftists out there who are saying that like voting doesn't matter the republicans and democrats are all the same well now they actually have the chance of becoming a like a part of the joining a party and like backing a candidate because they can okay that, where, i think no, that's no, my no, no, issue no, no, no. Oh, you okay. go down. please let me in this uh like this is actually where i disagree with chow but I, I wanted to actually agree with you earlier so like why do you do this to me uh, the part where I Might absolutely be. agree agree with you is like the federalism sucks right now because everything is going national and nothing is local. Like yeah. it, like the only like I'm gonna say something cringe to a lot of y'all. God bless the Republican Party for actually caring about states right now. But anyway, they won. Was, they won. They won the local level, and Democrats yeah. have to cope with that for generations. So and, anyway, the the other side of this is uh, at least for me is that uh, when, when it comes down to it is that while Bernie would actually not have to cater. If he was in, let's just, I'm just going to say DSA for, you know, uh, sake of argument, sure, he sure. wanted to cater for that party is that to actively get the levers of power that he needs to on the federal level. If we were to have a representative or proportional system, it's going to be just like the Bundestag. He's going to have to cater to the coalition partners that he has to get to, to get whatever the government threshold is, whether it's 45%, 50, 55, whatever our coalition that we set is that you have to have that amount of representation to form a government he's still got to deal with people. And that's what I am my biggest detractor on when it comes to this particular uh, uh, arrangement, whether it's STV or any of this is that the extremists will still have to deal with the, with the moderates within their coalition to actually put forward legislation, get it passed. So all we do is forward the primary system that we have here in the United States and we ship it on the general level. That's literally all this does. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all well, I like well, hold on, our well, parties, but our caucuses become speech. the new parties. Like what we what we consider our caucuses, they become the parties, and now yeah. what we consider are the parties like become the coalition, like coalitions. Like but I feel like we're just reinventing easier. the same wheel. But it's much easier for them to work. Like for, it would be much easier for a Bernie Sanders and a DSA, for example, to work with modern liberal Democrats than it would be for him to. How it works now is especially with the the threshold we have in the Senate uh, for the Democrats to work with. Well, the, the the Republicans like. But what it just, exactly it just is greases the wheels here? But like, what's it doesn't working? Solve though? all the problems, but it, it it makes it easier to get things done. At I mean, least in theory. I mean, sure, but at the same time, like, there's like fractions of what it, whatever you believe left to be that are just like an, in opposition with other parts of the left. So and I and I don't under and I just don't think that for a lot of people. Like they're willing to compromise on certain positions and certain political positions, and and I I don't know if like I don't know if that I don't know if like this whole party thing might 
like rectify that because the idea of collaboration yeah, two party system or a multi party system within a multi party like i guess my 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 um i guess what i'm stuck on is that like yeah like all of these bases are going to have an electorate and then you you're making it it just sounds like to what wick was saying is that these electorates are in such a way that there is enough overlap that there is collaboration i don't necessarily think that's the case we'd have to like figure out what electorate this new caucus or, or party, whatever you want to believe it to be, is targeting, and then say, okay, where's the overlap, where's the disagreements, is there even possibilities for collaboration? Yeah, so then Mind the, at the end of the day, coalition building, well, I, I kind of also want to hit on Tiberius's point, uh, Bam's point, as well as Joe Lewis's point, is that at the end of the day, Bernie Sanders, in a proportional representation, his party is going to have a lot more leverage when building a coalition with other parties than if he was just in the party with the caucus. Because that's the thing about, like, the caucus right now for, like, the social Democrats is that they're so small to the point where they could they could barely leverage anything to get what they actually want. But if they had their own party that had, like, the, the genuine backing of that particular supporters that are not the moderate Democrats in which, like, I, I would probably be a person who would switch from the Democratic Party to the Bernie Sanders Party. I think a lot of people would. And that is going to give them so much more in like asking how the coalition is going to look like, what the government is going to try to do, and what are their goals. And from what like Joe Lewis is saying, like there, at some point, there has to be some sort of a compromise because if there isn't a coalition that reaches over 50%, then you are risking the other side of getting a coalition of 50%. So like, even if you have one party that has like 49%, they have the, the most seats out of any other party. But if they're unable to compromise with any other party, then all the other parties could just band together and be like, yeah, we actually reached 51% and we're going to be the ones forming the government. Even though the even though like one of the parties is like has 49% they're the largest party kind of makes sense but no in, in all actionality when it comes to like the principles of democracy of course the the parties the other parties combined into 51% that's the majority and that's mm -hmm. good they're the, going to be the ones forming the coalition well, yeah to, maybe I just wasn't... To, uh, let me uh, let in uh last year's name in wick well, I mean it's hard to form a coalition with um with all the other parties right um the more parties involved, the more fragile it is. But this, this is the thing: is that if you have lots of small parties, in in the end, every bill is either either passes or it doesn't, and it passes or it doesn't based on you know how many people vote for it and how many people vote against it. So if you have more parties, that just means that you're going to have to have more coalitions. And when parties are in a coalition, they kind of lose a lot of their leeway to be an independent party and do independent things because they're part of a coalition. They have to go along with the other party. So, is it like? Is it better for a party to to be an independent party but be in a coalition where they have to do what this this other the more establishment party wants? Or is it better for those for that them to just be a single party where the individual members have more leeway to do to do break with uh with the party line uh from time to time if they want to? Like it's not so, obvious so, to me which is more flexible. Sure. Uh, again, and, and I understand that, but but again, uh <laughs> For me, the main benefit comes to the voter themselves rather than the party system. Um, and, and I'll give you an example. So in 2000, uh, one of the reasons Al Gore lost Florida was because so many people voted third party. And I remember being in, in college and stuff then, and, and, uh, and my, my professor, as a freshman, my professors looked at me and said, I will never vote uh, for a third party again because it's just so close, because it's just so much to lose and things like that. And so if we had a multi-party system, people would be more free to vote their conscience. People would feel more Frank free to vote voting. for how they want to do it <laughs> and what they actually believe in, rather than just get the other guys, right? Um, now, again, the problem comes, how do we get from there to here? And I don't have a clear path forward on that. I recognize that's a problem with what I'm advocating for. I can't give you a clear path forward to get from binary party to multi-party, uh, but I, I would advocate for it still because the benefits to the voter 
are what I am concerned about. What I care. Well, look, about. I, I, oh, so which from your perspective? I I just let me ask him. Just let me ask him real quick. Just so, okay. so I'm because I'm so I'm not being dumb. Um, so you're saying that you think you believe that it's not about the current vote. It's not about people who currently vote now. You're saying that the the biggest benefit would be that it would galvanize people who don't cons- uh, care both. about voting. Both, both. It would help the people who vote now. Like I only voted for Hillary Clinton in 2016 because like I didn't want to. But I didn't want Trump more. But if there was a better candidate and I thought they had a chance of winning and there was better candidates than Bernie Sanders being one of them, I would have felt more free to vote for who I actually wanted. And my actual uh, conscious decision would have been more represented there. Like we have a representative democracy. It would be more representative, which would be a good thing. And it would (sighs) galvanize the voters as well who do not currently vote at all. And I know quite a few of them because they're just they do feel like either one neither represents them so why should they vote so there is a fair much, thing lo, yeah there and that and that's that like you can't really argue against that because i mean fair okay. that's their vote their yeah vote, if, if, vote is if their, they had their more decision. choices more actual choices that mattered instead of this false choice like you could vote libertarian or something or green party now but you're just throwing that's it, you're throwing it away no, you're not getting anything yeah, that, exactly. that, 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 so, so second so part of that. I'll oh, go for it. Like, I'm it's... sorry. I, I just, I, I think I cut off Chow. So let me ask the second part, and then um, let Chow say what he's gonna say. Second, second part of that question, and this is just me being American and not knowing enough about international politics. Like, do other countries have more? Um, I'm not gonna say pride. Are, are other countries more uh, accepting of their systems? Like, do they feel more represented? Like, even when things don't go their way, like, oh, oh it's not, it's not my, you know, it's not the so the party. The system works. The, we just didn't work of, out this a time. A lot in a lot of other countries, the voting uh, percentage is much higher than America. I can't list them off the top of my head, but I would like I I can't uh, say that's a direct measure measure like a direct measurement of feel more pride in their system. But if more participation is had in other countries, I think it's 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 reasonable to assume it's because they feel that they their voice is heard more in those systems. They also tend to so, have less apathy. Yeah, uh, like I, actually, um, I said this in my opening, uh, and I want to reiterate this because it actually is incredibly important. While I am absolutely against making a multi part or like a, a super pluralistic multi party state for the United States, is that I do, and I openly conceded at the beginning that it does increase voter uh voter turnout it increases voter happiness and it increases voter um confidence um i this is actually why i'm a republican when it comes to actual legislation uh not in the party sense but actually in the uh the governing sense is that this is where i don't like people when they vote because yeah they're happier with this extremist uh whoever the fuck, but I don't want to even see them remotely near the political levers of power. I don't want to see a Marjorie Taylor Green party. I don't even like that she's accepted in the Republican party, but if you absolutely see a multi-party system, what you guys want, she's going to be one of the front runners in that damn party. And that's a mockery of this country for me. So no, can we not do this? Oh, yeah, well, she gets I, like I, I wanna, three I'm, seats, I'm, maybe like what's really, I'm gonna get that. I'm I, gonna get I don't that even much. first. <laughs> Uh, I want to respond to Wick because um, some people don't know like how we're gonna get from one from like from part A to part B. I guess um, in Congress right now, there's already a bill that if it passes, it's going to make all the districts multi-member proportional represent uh, proportional uh, voting. And how you would get from a two-party system to a multi-party system is by changing how the votes count in the first. Does that phase. bill have any so chance right of passing? Now, Huh? Like realistically, does no. that bill have any? No, absolutely not. There's no political. So that's capital, where I, like that's that's my issue here. No, like no, 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 no. Okay, so, 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 you. Will. Okay, so, oh, no. May so be, I guess I misunderstood. When you say that, I don't know the path forward. Uh, your 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 concern is more so with how unrealistic or realistic yes, it is. Yes, okay? real like a realistic. I maybe I should have added that word. I don't see a realistic path forward. Yeah. Okay. I, then I I would have I would not have answered in the same way. Um. But yeah, right now in the United States, we do elections first past the post, where a candidate in a party, you don't need to reach a majority. You just need to beat the other guy. But in proportional representation, everybody's percentage counts so long as it reaches a threshold. So like even if in a single district, you're beat 95 to 5%, okay, that 5%, whew, you really took a loss. But if you could get one seat 
out of that 5%, that 5% in that one district, that's represented in the parliament. And that, that representation is also combined with other representation around the country. Um, and then, oh, Tiberius, what was your point? I want to respond to that. <laughs> I forgot. I, I was talking to basically how, um, like, if you, if oh, yeah, you do. Green. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So when it comes to like, I'm, I'm in support of putting a threshold on the parties. Mm -hmm. So if there's going to be like a really, really fringe party and they can't re even reach that threshold because they're, they're just, they're just that crazy, then that's one way to weed them out. Um, however, you're still going to get like a far left party and you're still going to get a far right party and they're still going to be like the nut jobs there probably um, if, if you are so believer of nut jobs are on the fringes and not in the middle. Um, <laughs> but then what you're also going to be risking for the two party system and this is where I'll say both systems are just not ideal because you're, you're going to get those nut jobs in voted in anyways is you're going to have like maybe risking a Trump kind of a situation where he takes over the entire party, or you could put all the nut jobs into like one basket and just leave them there. It's like, sure, you get 10% of the seats. Sure, but no one's gonna work for you because you're just that crazy. And you just got 10%. What is the likelihood that you're actually gonna get any sort of legislation passed? 100%. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna split this because it brings me back to something that I wanted to talk to Joe about because Joe was talking about how the Republican Party has openly admitted that they need to expand their voter base to, to be competitive in a win. They're mm -hmm. right. The, the scary part is, is that the way they've done that is under a guy named Donald J. Trump, where they put where they put up about 20 million voters on their on their voter roll. So and and then like the problem and you probably you probably agree with this is that like, I don't think Donald Trump is the path forward for the Republican I Party. Like, I, and, I think, I think yeah. the only reason the Republicans are competitive, and I'm going to be super partisan here for a second, is that the Democrats are absolutely fucking garbage. I think that's the only reason why the, Demo well, the Democrats aren't getting, are, aren't winning. They're garbage out. locally and state. The, and they're, they're garbage, they're garbage, they're garbage they federally too. Well, <laughs> like, well, I think I think the problem great, is we're is great that in like, the urban areas, okay? Yeah, it's like we're seeing we're kind of seeing cool. like two competing things happening at the same time. Like I can only speak for Jersey here on this local, so I'll do that for a second because no FX says the dumbest fucking thing I've ever heard in a chat room. So I just want to kind of address that because that's some fucking misinformation. Like Ed Durr was a like really sort of like constitutional conservative Republican that beat our state senator, our state president, the president of our Senate. And people are heralding it's like a really big upset and it's like a big win for the Democratic Party. But then they realized like, OK, you get a you get a Trumper in in your in your district, a district that's already majority red, deep red, actually. And he's politically worthless because he doesn't have the experience in the Senate to, to advocate for things. So he's just kind of on the tail end of other Republicans and other Republicans do not like him because like he'll he'll say that like like he'll want republicans to go farther and the jersey republicans are just like yeah we can't do that and then like he goes complaining on like nj1015 about how like he's trying his best but these republicans are resisting and it's like yeah because like you you got you got the win but republicans didn't like had the foresight to be like okay we gotta like if we're going to bring it, and this might be to your point, Tiberius, is like, if we're going to bring in these, this new wave of Republicans, whatever the, the fuck a Trump Republican looks like in, in the local level or state level, then we have to like, you know, like do some onboarding in terms yeah. of like what they're supposed to say and how they're supposed to advocate. And, and, that, and that's what they're absolutely failing with, which is why like, like we're in a race. I, like, I've talked about this many times on my show and I, I've kind of hit it with the, uh, on this panel as well. Uh, and the times I've been invited is that we're in a race between who can reform first. Can the Democrats reform their coalition into something that's far more cohesive where they're not fighting fucking constantly and can actually pass shit? Or can the Republicans actually figure out how to get out of the closet and be like, hey, we're a little bit more sane, we're a little bit more reasonable, and we actually appeal to more people well, than Democrats the Democrats come out of the closet all the time, right? That, that I'm kind of a joke, but you know, anyway, that, that's kind of where I'm getting at is that like Republicans need to figure out who they are. And honestly, the Democrats are doing the same fucking thing at this. Point. So um, go ahead. Yeah. Um, you've kind of strayed. Um, uh, and I wanted to like, try to refocus us, um, mm -hmm. on uh, third parties. Um, and mm, okay. So I think 
the biggest counter to saying, well, the two-party system protects us from extremism would be Donald Trump. Um, uh, people will say, well, then how do you explain him? Um, I, I, I think that's, I think it's really interesting because the, uh, during that election, the Republican party was shocked, right? The establishment was completely shocked that this was happening. Um, that, uh, there was this movement, uh, uh that built up that came out of nowhere. Their, uh, preferred person who was supposed to be in line there. Was it, it wasn't Mitt Romney. No, it was, um, um, Jeb the other Bush. Bush, Jeb Bush. Thank you, Jeb, with the exclamation point. Um, uh, he, <laughs> uh, he was the one who was supposed to be online, right? Everyone, like, he had magazine covers, um, uh, and, and then he fizzled out very quickly, and the party quickly wanted something differently. Um, ooh, uh, is it that, um? that two-party systems don't actually protect you from um, extremism and, and i i define trump as, as extreme um but maybe someone else doesn't yeah right maybe this maybe is third within, parties but, provide a place for the extremism to go other than the mainstream parties right like maybe the explanation for trump is that because there's no third party for trump to be in he's, he has to be in the like the the mainstream party um in order to appeal to the fringe and they can do that because the moderates are going to vote for them anyway, because the other party is also appealing to the fringe. So, um, you know, maybe with the third parties, you get, you know, you get the fringe move off into their own parties and the mainstream parties become more moderate. Although in the end, they're still going to have to negotiate with the fringes anyway. It's just the negotiation is going to happen in another place, right? So it might be less, it might be less scary because you don't have to see the parties be led by these these kind of fringe people but they'll still be there mm, I, I largely want to second this uh and, and all i'll say is this is that if uh, just looking and this is part of my opening statement that i want to reiterate is that looking at what's happened in france looking what's happening in some degree germany uh the uk like everywhere except largely canada like the donald trumps of the world are becoming normal now, the question is, is that did we go extreme and then we we're just normalizing extreme or did the right in the across the planet or more particularly, the, did the right in the Western world just start reinventing itself? Because when's the last time we saw a political overhaul uh, in the in the Western world? Like it's a rise Reagan? of populism. It's a rise of populism. Uh, it it, it the is overlap, popular. the overlap between. Oh, uh, yeah. Infrared rising. Let's go, baby. The overlap between. <laughs> well. Even Bernie voters and Trump voters, like the the amount of people who would have voted for Bernie who ended up voting for Trump, is probably larger than you would expect. It, it was huge. Um, like, yes, yeah. and, and because they they appeal to to a lot of the populist in different ways, of course, but they appeal to a lot of the populist sentiments that that are throughout there that the other parties have largely just gone away from, like the majority Republican Party. Uh, at least back then, now they've realigned to be more populist, and the Democratic Party is is pulling away from. Um, and 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 until the Democrats uh, get their act together and stop treating uh, rural America and stop treating like uh, people who aren't in the urban areas as trash, they're going to keep losing, and it's going to keep being bad. And they're keep not going to keep, and they're going to keep not understanding why they're losing. But they need to understand that they're alienating a large portions of these. Uh, of, of the voting populace, the populace that actually goes out to the polls, and and, and we need to fix that, gang. So well, it we'll, seems like that. We'll, like we'll, what does that mean? Fix it. We don't really don't show up to the midterms. Like I, I don't know. I, I don't know. I'm kind of I'm kind of pilled. Where I think it's just kind of it's just like all smoke and and no fire. Where it's like we we understand that like I don't know. We can go. I'm, I'm right, glad, Bam. Yeah, it seems like we're like. What what we're getting, what I always get from this thing is like, we want to re, we want to give people exactly what they want, the exact same thing, package it differently, but for some reason it makes them happier. Like we're saying like, oh, I hate pumas, but I love mountain lions, I love cougars, those are cool. Like, because we're saying like cougars are based, cougars, okay? Right? Am I right, fellas? Who doesn't love cougars? Eh? Yeah, but they hate pumas. But uh, shout out to Sarah J. It, it feels um, because it, everything everything we're seeing that we're discussing about what this third party would do is essentially the exact same thing that could currently happen under like that could happen under the same the exact two party system we have now, but people have for some reason or another lost faith in it, which 
Um, Wait, are, you say, are you saying that a third party under a two party system first past the post would be equivalent to like a no? I'm yeah, I'm talking about, no, I'm not talking about uh, a, a first past post, I'm saying in this like um, uh, multi party system that we're discussing. So, I uh, what I, uh, what well, I don't understand, a third party, wait, so like I, I still don't understand what you're trying to say. It's, it's, it's maybe it's because of the we have like, we have parties that have proven to be successful, but I think the problem is is that people don't want to feel like their vote is getting thrown away due to party support. And then, like, you, what you would hope is that if a member of your party, like, for example, like, if you're somebody who supports an individual who's on the Working Family Party's ticket, and you then see them support the candidate, the lar the candidate at large, you would hope that, okay, maybe some of the things that my candidate got hit their ass blown out for is going to reflect in whatever Joe Biden or whoever the fuck Democrats put up. And by and large, it isn't necessarily that like we get these like sort of, um, uh, these like, let's say false promises where it's like for the working family party, like the part of their party platform is about abolishing or at least erasing student loan debt. And then, like, the can just gets kicked and kicked and kicked and kicked. And then, like, you have people, like, within the party itself just like, well, what, why did we support this man? Like, what the fuck? Like, what is making, yeah. um, on, on the ju Lewis's what makes point, the justice like, the, down? The fact that they're in parliament or, like, in Congress in the first place gives them leverage in order to not just, like, hope and pray mm -hmm. that, like, the larger party is actually going to fulfill their promises or whatever they said that, like, hey, please vote for me, I'm gonna do your bidding, blah, 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 blah. Like, they're, they're actually there. It's like, no, if you actually want my vote to pass this legislation, well, you gotta do me a little bit of favors as well. Yeah, the, yeah. I'm saying, I'm saying the people in, like, like, for example, what the Justice Dems not being an official party doesn't, I don't feel like that makes them at, any more beholden to, like, the will of the party as anyone else like they're, it they're gets in them less leverage district. you understand that right like it gets them less leverage overall i, I don't know like what what are you, what's the alternative okay. what are, are you gonna is anyone is someone gonna primary aoc ilhan omar like I don't no, think she'll so. just lose on she'll just lose on her own like I, th I feel like she has quite the capacity to do that on her own girl <laughs> power right yeah so hmm. so one of the one of the things when we talk about leverage is is how it translates to when they go to congress or the senate or wherever these local officials uh, go to to vote federally so on the local level you know fair but on the the federal level um these smaller caucuses and stuff just would have much more leverage if they were an official party that they could uh, draw their own funds uh, set their own standards for, et cetera. They'd have a lot more power. So I have their own I, voters. I finally. wanted to uh, push back a little bit on something uh, last year's name said. Oh, maybe I, I'll end up actually agreeing with you. Um, but uh, with talking about um, like the fringes of the party, right? When when talking about Trump's rise, um, that like I don't think Trump captured the fringes. I think he captured the party. Um, I thought he like he tapped into some energy that the establishment was completely fucking missing, um, and uh, he uh, affect. I mean, it's hard to find uh, out who isn't a Trump Republican at this point, right? Now it wasn't like that originally. It kind of grew um, from like his his initial entry to his presidency, right, and through to the end. Um, it grew, but it's it's hard to find things that aren't a Trump Republican. So, um, I don't, if we had a, a, What's a, a Trump parliament... Republican, someone who, who would not vote for a more moderate candidate. Yeah. Mitt Romney. Nobody remembers Mitt Romney. Like, even if you <laughs> like, no, nobody, nobody cared about Mitt Romney. Like, it, the, that, how dare were... you? His what? 79 like kids Mitt care Romney. about Mitt Romney. <laughs> like, I don't agree with him on like almost anything, but I think he's a man of principle. How, how no, but I, I'm not, I'm not saying how, whether no, he's better okay, or worse than Trump. Like, I'm saying that like Mitt Romney didn't didn't capture the party Mitt romney wasn't the did, like the he was the he was what they had and they put him up there but the republicans weren't like excited about Mitt romney um and i don't think they've been excited about anybody for a long time the only reason they like w bush because it was like hey a president's kid that sounds kind of cool but um i think the i think the republicans have kind of been searching for an identity for um probably the better part of two decades and i think trump sort of gave them something like hey we can be we can be the power move guys. We can, we're big business. This is what we do. Like, and my larger point know. is, is that like, um, 
if there were a parliamentary system to multiple parties, right? I don't think there wouldn't be any reason why we'd have an, a Marine Le Pen moment like we're seeing now, possibly seeing now in France, and that Trump, you know, wins um, despite that. That, like, that it's not as if um, these third parties are where, like, this energy goes to drain safely, right? Um, that you're kind of just wasting your votes. Um, you could actually add up to a certain point where you, where you can win. And he just took such a percentage. And and then, and even then, I think uh, uh, the left would be in a worse uh, point because we'd be um, less united in that sort of system, right? Uh, we would be broken up. Like, Bernie Sanders wouldn't be in the same party as Joe Biden. So uh, there'd be a breakup there in the votes and uh, a bit of single, a consolidation in whatever uh, party Trump would be in. Do you yeah, guys think but I'm that's wrong? why it's so important that's why it's so important to have like an ideological coalition where like the left and the center left they're not going to agree they're not going to see eye to eye on everything mm -hmm. but they're going to know that like hey it's probably better off if we work together than if say like the moderates decided to work with the center right or the far right those dirty moderates yeah yeah so like i mean like e even look at germany like the cdu um, for, for a long time, they were the one dominating um, in, in Parliament uh, just until the most recent election where uh, they, they came out to be the second. They came out to be the second largest party. But but just because you're the second largest party doesn't mean that you're going to be the one forming the coalition in which the SDU, they decided to form a coalition with other two parties in which they, they saw more eye to eye. They were able to reach 51%. That's a majority. Boom. That's a coalition. Now, to, I want to answer uh, Prime's question in that, like, is a proportional representation, is that going to prevent Trump? Is that going to prevent Martin Le Pen? No, absolutely not. If you wanted to, like, apply a pure pro proportional representation to France right now, all you have to go do is just disregard the second round and look at the first round and see, like, what percentage of voters she got. She got. Um, I, I, I didn't look at it. It's probably, like, what, around, like, 20%, maybe, if I had to guess. So that means like twenty percent of like the of the parliament like goes to her party. What what, what were the real numbers? Uh, I'm, uh, just before the runoff, it was twenty three and twenty two. So twenty three for Macron, twenty two for her. I if I'm remembering that correctly. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I I was around. Uh, I guess I made it correctly, kind of. Um. But then, like, is a proportional representation? Is that going to curb extremism? Is that going to stop it? Absolutely not. Just look at Weimar Republic. Germany, in which like the Nazi Party and Hitler was able to year after year after year, election after election after election, get more and more of a percentage to the point where they were able to take over the entire government. Um, so then, like e even then, there are also risks. So when it comes to like a democratic system, the system is like one part of the puzzle to make a good democracy. You have to be really concerned about civil society and our institutions and norms and how strong they are. Like there are other things that like education, how well informed we are as well. Uh, there, are, there are other things that like go into the equation of what makes a good democracy a good democracy, not just like two party system versus proportional representation. You could have a proportional representation system, which is like, I think ideal, more ideal than a two party one, but it could still have flaws because of other factors. Anyone else? I think um and I I just think sorry I stole it. I don't know who the uh, rep, uh the Democratic Party like the the left has is winning the culture war I guess as of right now so it's been a lot of pushback but generally speaking as we look at like major corporations like the left is winning the culture war but politically like I will say the Democrats are really really bad at um creating social pressure or making them care about anything they do like well, uh, there, there's plenty of people who say like the democrats haven't done anything like oh there's been uh, this long-term freeze on student loan debt that even if you i just i don't know how i feel on that but even if that's something you want to support like that should be a big thing you should be out there every day talking about it and they don't because i don't know the democrats just suck at marketing in that way well one of one of the this was mentioned earlier one of the, the large issues is well, the Republicans won on the local level, and so they get to draw the, the maps and things like that. They get to, to it really gives them a, a huge advantage, even when it comes to federal elections and things like that. And and because they they like don't have the same pressures, I guess 
uh, or the same levers of power that they would socially. Like uh, Democrats control, or I will, I won't even say Democrats, but the left in general controls a lot of the levers of power when it comes to social institutions such as Hollywood and things like that. They have a major influence there, so they can control those levers of power in a way that they can't when it comes to elections and things like that. Right? It's been very hard for Democrats to translate that to getting people out to vote. It's it's something that, that, that they haven't been able to kind of transition their 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 uh soft power uh socially well most of these people shouldn't be voting anyway they don't care about politics they don't know anything about the policies they'd be voting for why would we encourage them to vote on anything i I mean they definitely don't know but i don't know about they they shouldn't be able to but yeah that's why people don't care and and informing them okay i think the thing that that it's ah man like i I don't even know if I agree or disagree. I'm just going to say some shit. Like, I think the biggest problem for Democrat, one of the problems, not biggest, but one of them, is that they don't really understand how important local elections are for maintaining their political power and their, their ability to push policy. Like, one of the reasons why we see all these trans bills, for instance, is because there's no opposition. <laughs> because they don't, like, they're in areas that they're not competitive or they just don't care. Where it's like, okay, wouldn't it be something if the senators and House of Representatives in these states that are trying to pass these anti-trans bills came together with some type of coalition? Like, hey, this is happening in our communities. We need, like, this if it can happen in me and I'm a Democrat in the Senate, then this can easily happen to you. Like, look at your stuff. But they don't do that. Like, they don't have the wait, hold on, but, but they, but they, they do do that in a lot of places. I think the issues that I think the issues oh. of the communities don't give a fuck. No, no, no. They don't. They, they the don't, community. They I think the not, Democrat Party. The Democrat Party understands the importance of local elections. The communities just don't give a fuck about it. That's not true. They right? don't. So, they so don't. I don't know. Well, okay, that, that, they do. They kind of bring up the, the, the Democrat right, Party, a party, a party that exists to get itself elected, doesn't understand that local operation? elections. That, that 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 requires a lot of infrastructure that requires a lot of money and things democrats just don't invest on it in the local level especially in very red no, it's just that it's their their priorities are different where it's like a lot of them under so with some of these anti-trans bills a lot of the public is anti-trans on the democrat yes, but, in, but the point is that there's there's oh, no opposition i can't i literally can't hear you doobie get your point out Okay, so, so I think I think saying that uh, the reason these things are passing is because you know people aren't going getting out to vote. I think it's kind of silly. In the reality, that's not, that's, that's not let, what anybody let, said. Let, let I'm finish, saying that they're in areas let and they're him, passing. Let him, let him finish. I want to finish. I want to finish. I want to finish. They're not pa- that they're they're passing because uh, people either don't give a fuck, and, and the ones that do give a fuck are anti-trans on the Democrat side and the Republican side, so they're not going to vote against it. They're, they're passing because there's no opposition from Democrats because they have majorities in the legislatures that they're passing it in. That's it. That's all it is. It ain't that deep. Yeah. So, again, it's not so much a problem with the, the Democrat Party not, not understanding that local elections are important. It's that their uh, Democrat voter base and the Republican voter base, to be fair, also just don't give a fuck about uh, local politics, local elections. They, they care That's... about politics in the midterms and they care about politics for presidential elections. But beyond that, they don't really give a fuck. That's, Republicans okay, obviously well, I, care I about it more since they're winning. I don't think more. that's like, important. To do it's, it's, it's just, it's just, it's, it's a, it's a ridiculous thing to say. Like the, the point that I'm trying to make here is that what Democrats should be doing is prioritizing and and reconnecting with local communities at the state and at the state level and at their local levels within districts, and they don't do that. So, like, I think a place to start is with the representatives at these districts. But by and large, like, you don't see coalitions or groups coming together in these states of opposition. Um, but there's but there's also just problems with gerrymandering as well. So a lot of the like a lot of these areas just aren't competitive, and they're and they aren't competitive due to political gerrymandering. I also so think you, that like nobody was taught to. Like, um... What do you think it would look like if the Democrats started caring about these communities? Because given that um, in like the last couple of years we've seen the money going into these communities, into state, lo- uh, uh, local, and federal elections, massively increase on all sides by the Democrats and the Republicans. It seems like they're, they're attempting to reach out. They're attempting to do something about this thing you think is a problem, but they're just not getting the, the return on investment because the actual communities do not give a fuck. 
I don't the, think it's the communities. The gaming, I think the, the issue is different. the games are different from each level of government. Like the way that you advocate for your mayors and council are going to be totally different than the way you advocate for your state representatives. That's going to be totally different than you advocate for your federal representatives. But by and large, in a lot of these areas, a lot of these individuals, Republican and Democrat alike, are running in areas where it's impossible for them to win seats because of political gerrymandering. And if you have a state that's politically gerrymandered to favor a political party, like New Jersey when it comes to Democrats or Florida when it comes to Republicans, then obviously you're going to have legit, like you can just do whatever you want if you have the governor's seat and you have the assembly. And it's shown time and time again. The reason why the trans bills are passing is because you have Republican governors who are able to just like, all right, I'll sign it. Good. Good to go. Give me more. It's like, this is the game. That's the game. Yeah, but I'm saying, I think anybody, hold on. I think anybody who existed through like the 60s, and 70s, which is the, uh, like, uh, these are going to be predominantly conservative-leaning people are the only people that's voting. I think a lot of people who, um, a lot of people, like, voting wasn't prioritized, um, and uh, me and a lot of people I know who, like, going up through school in general. Like, and it wasn't prioritized in high school, it wasn't prioritized in middle school. Like, we were never taught the idea of, like, oh, voting is what matters. Like, and there was there was some level of, like, um, hands-on engagement and, like, uh, direct action that was kind of uh, had a little bit of prioritized, but we never talked about voting. We didn't, I didn't even know how to register to vote at yeah, 18. Um, and I think that I think I think that we and this isn't new. This is something that's existed for probably around 20, 25 ish years. And so I think that you have like a, a large base of generally if you polled it more. Uh, actually, the polls seem to be more lefting people, leveling people from Gen X down who um, just don't still don't feel the need to vote partially because of apathy and also partially because they were never taught to do so in the beginning which is why like our local level how do you think you need to do this worse than that though right? so, like, like on, wait no, what do you, when you say they were never taught to vote what do you mean by that yeah i'm saying like the the process it, of voting it, like, on, these, how do you even register are, hold on both major parties in the states do a pretty good job of letting people know that there's an election going on because they want their side to get out and vote, right? But they, they don't, don't but they don't show they, how the voting process it, it, works. So beyond and, that, so if you're if you're an adult or you're a grown ass adult, right, and, and you know that there's an election, if you wanted to participate in that election, don't you think, you know, a, a, a grown ass adult would be able to, to figure out how to do that? To either go online or make a phone call and be like, hey, how do I vote? It seems like pretty some pretty simple thing to do, but it's if, not a simple thing. That's the point. It's, it's, it's not. Exactly yeah, it's not. not. Like, well, and then you have the public. I'm not talking about someone. I'm not. Reality is, yeah, this is not, a well, they don't want to. They don't want to do it. This is. You guys keep calling this political apathy. Yeah, it is apathy because they don't give a fuck about it. Right? No, I, I think for no, a lot a of man, this is such things. bait, but like I think something to to Ban's point is that yeah, like you have different levels of separation between politics and education so even if you wanted to have some type of like orientation of how you vote granted i live in jersey so we're, we're we already do this like we have like our local election that like you practice voting for midterms you practice voting for general so this already exists within the middle school elementary and high school infrastructure but not every state has that not every state has the ability to say like hey like let's have our own election for like the these candidates so you can practice voting and practice electoralism like some states just don't give a fuck and then you get shit out of 18 and like with no lot with no like automatic voter registration with no like way of like figuring out how to register the vote it's it's unfortunate you know you need well, to take one of the and if you like You'd like to, yeah, that's a stupid. That's a stupid take. We can move on. Going to influence the government, you need to do a little bit of legwork to figure out how to do. Yeah, that. that's a and that's a stupid take. Let's, let's go to that. Tiberius and then Wick. Sorry, how do I mute myself? Um, we've gone in circles in a few things that I really want to ask. Number one, can I ask Joe real quick? What do you yeah. think? The, what do you think the the big discrepancy is between people going out to vote for certain things or for certain uh, policy, and then? All of a sudden, we get to Congress, or you get to your local elections, or I'm sorry, your local uh, offices, and people are unhappy. They don't feel like government's doing a damn thing for them. Like, what is the core issue here that is the disconnect? Like, are, are is it, it politicians, it, people? Who is it? I think it's a combination uh, of everybody. Like, I think on one hand, politicians have to be more honest about what they can substantively do when they are in power. I think one of the things that they do a lot of the times is that they make certain promises to parts of their electorate that they're trying to cater to and without sort of explaining the reality of the situation. 
Like, for example, um, if we're looking at, like, weed in New Jersey, like, one of the things that Republicans keep trying to sell is this idea of, like, business cultivation and the ability for, like, you can just grow your weed at home. But then, like, the, the real catch is, like, oh, actually, there's a lot of, like, practices, policies, and procedures that will prevent you from doing that. But we're not going to tell you that. We're just going to push weed through. And then you have, like, right-leaning people complaining on the radio for hours, like, why are the Republicans slashing cultivation? It's like, because they never supported it in the first place. Like, they just wanted your vote for that. But also at the same time, when it comes to individuals, I think that, and it, it, for me, it's education, like, asking better questions of individuals when you're like trying to like explore like how they are with political advocacy and what they care about um but that's like more of a school thing than anything else but not every state's gonna want to do that i think that like something that other states could do with like what jersey did is have better ways of like people participating in the electoral process so when they're out of the school system it's like oh i remember this voting thing like let's i can do this you know um, I don't know if I answered that question. I'm sorry. If you're man. so fucking stupid as an adult that you can't figure out how to look up how to vote in your area, I don't want you fucking voting. Did I answer like, you guys, your question, you Tiberius? Are speaking, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, people yeah. are like babies. There, there's a level where you, you did. And like this this is one of the things that kind of really bothers me is that like no matter which way I look, I, I kind of want to point at everybody and say you all suck. And it's not like everyone at the panel, but everyone in, in just in general when it comes to the electorate. The mm -hmm. electorate seems to have these ridiculous ideas of what can actually be done. Uh, when we barely get anything done. So, like, there's a level where I'm like, you know, you're promised the moon, and yet you never see anything. So, well, like, yeah, and, and then... Like, sorry, I, not, to, not to cut you off. I'm so sorry. I appreciate go it, man. Uh, like, just a thousand different directions I can go with this. Like, the politicians aren't being fucking honest. The people aren't being honest. Like, uh, and we have the most ridiculous standards in the world of our elected officials. And then, all, on top of which, we literally make their job absolutely fucking suck. Like, and then, have you seen how we treat our politicians? Yeah, and, and something, and something too. It's like I knock on Florida a lot, but it's like, why are you a cent? Why are you like a, just object? Just an objective question: What political power do you wield as a state senator who's a Democrat in Florida? You have not had Senate control for as long as I've been alive. For like, I, for long as like maybe maybe um, Dionysus have been alive. I can't. Th it's like it's been like in the high twenties since the since the late eighties, early nineties. And it's like, so what? What's a Democrat in Florida gonna promise to their constituents? Of like, oh, we're gonna go in there, we're gonna fight. Like, you ain't doing shit. You're gonna get fucked by that supermajority. Like, and and then you're gonna have to go like walk back and be like. I'm sorry, guys. We couldn't get it done. It's like, oh, it's okay. Maybe next time. There is no next time in Florida. Democrats are not going to save you in Florida. Democrats are not going to save you in New Jersey. So it's like, uh, I don't know. <laughs> so, so then in that case, like the thing that, uh, th what would be the hope for Democrats would be uh, some sort of Democrat graphic change, right? Uh, because that's what's happening in Georgia, for instance. Georgia, uh, you know, influx of uh, African Americans and has changed the voting electorate and allowed them to uh, uh, have those upsets in terms of like getting those uh, Senate uh, Democrats in. Um, you have to have some sort of uh, Democratic. Uh, yeah. can, can that's going to change. Yeah, like, that, that, that will change I, I, real fucking... quick. I, exactly. No, true. No, no, uh, Wick, no, Wick no. you've been waiting. I... And Bam, I, I love you, Bam, but I, I don't, I don't mm. know. I, I think. I think I think um, I think the the deadly duo in Georgia and the Senate was an anomaly, Wick. and it's going to swing red again. But that's just me. I I think so too, Wick. So so uh, two things that I really want to, to kind of address here. Uh, Bam, you're not wrong uh, when you talk about people just not being as interested in voting anymore, and especially young people. It's not so much. Ha so so I think one of the more insidious things that I've seen happen, at least in the last five to ten years isn't just people not wanting to vote, it's people being actively anti-voting and encouraging people not to vote. And I see this a lot on the left. It's like, why are you voting? Voting doesn't do anything. And we're going to transition to direct activism. And we're going to do this and not vote. Um, and it's just the wildest thing to me. I don't understand it. I get it to an extent where they don't feel representative and think represented by the Democrats anymore. I get that. I understand that, which is why, again, I think bringing it back to the third party, uh, the multiple party system is, again, uh, when you have those 
gridlocks and things like or those those uh places like florida like uh, joe was talking about where you're just such a, a small minority compared to the super majority if we did get to a more kind of a multi-party system there would be more room you would have a little more influence now it might not solve all the problems of course it won't but it, it would give you a lot more there so um to to, to kind of address that point like yeah anyone who's advocating oh voting doesn't work don't vote you're you're shooting yourself in whatever cause you're uh, representing in the foot right there um and the second thing i want to kind of address here um is this idea that uh, we can't improve the process to register to vote and things like that i think we can as easy as it may be in many states uh, i think we could definitely improve the process uh so what it talks about like also uh, another thing i want to bring up is direct ballot initiatives a lot of states right now and this is something that's gone underreported are making it much harder to do direct ballot initiatives and what those are is, is not voting for a candidate but is voting for like a proposition 13 or something where you are voting directly for a change to law of some sort you mean you mean like when um in my old township where they voted for dispensaries the council tried to vote against the vote of the people that type of yeah. shit yeah <laughs> where they were just yeah. like i don't think i don't think people in chat are understanding what i'm saying imagine a world where your community says like hey we want two dispensaries in our community and we're going to vote for it unanimously. And then the council goes, but can we do that though? Maybe we should have a vote as a council to see if this is in the best interest of, that's of just, residents. That's just one of the <laughs> ways they're doing it. There's uh, another state. I, I, I want to say it's uh, either uh, North Carolina. I think it's North Carolina, but don't quote me on this. North where, Carolina! Uh, they're, they're making it so that in order to get we'll something on a direct ballot initiative, you have to you have to uh, get all the signatures you require for that on the same piece of paper. So it's getting this weird situation where people are bringing these beach towel sized pieces of paper into the, the, the state <laughs> legislator in order to get their ballot initiative. It's just wild shit. Mm. Um, and, and that's one of the reasons they're doing this is because when you give direct ballot initiatives, the voters tend to vote left in a lot of cases. They tend to vote for things like uh, universal health care. They, they tend to vote for things like legalizing weed and things like that. They tend to vote for a lot of... They tend to vote against uh, gay marriage. They, they tend to vote they, in they favor of like anti-trans bills. 100%. Like, the, not the, 100 the voter base is the not as like left the, as you're in, in the overall sense, it kind of is. Yeah, um, no, Amber, it's not. Uh, I want to get back in here for two things. Number one is that uh, talking about Wick's uh, public initiative thing... If you're actually putting that to the American people writ large, they tend to vote it was socially conservative and they tend to vote economically liberal, uh, particularly when it is to the mass electorate, because, you know, a lot of Americans are poor and a lot of poor Americans are that combination. The other thing here, I want to ask Prime and Joe this just real quick, because uh, it, I think it's fascinating. Uh, how much of Georgia is demographic change versus how much of it was Stacey Abrams getting out there and actually getting people to vote? That was definitely a larger, uh, larger portion. Uh, Georgia's always been pretty black. I mean, no, but like it. Uh, well, I mean, it's always been uh, have a lot of black individuals. True, but like that there has been increasing, right? There has been a huge demographic shift. Um, but uh, yeah. we, we uh, but it's. I think it's both. I mean, I think it's clearly both. So you had, um, you know, a, an increase there, but like this, the base was completely um demotivated because of what joe uh lewis was saying previously right um and that you just hadn't won for a long time what can you promise them right you can't promise anything um i think stacy abrams in her campaign uh did a lot of work um trying to educate the votership and saying like hey, we, we can actually do this we can actually make a difference here but you have to show up you can't just like assume um that the other side will definitely win and i'll yeah I'll say and, it again. That, like, I, I, and the last thing yeah. i'll say is that wins mm -hmm. beget wins right uh when people see success um then uh that inspires them to jump on in so uh when they saw stacy abrams almost make it right um that inspired people when they uh saw uh what's the space that um um uh was it this the the the, the senatorial uh candidate i think it was who was like um uh like uh, possibly like missing out of children right um that one judge um and he failed right by the skin of his teeth he's failed but uh that was a win um, and then now with uh, these two senators, right, it's another win. So, like, this will encourage more people to come out because it's a possibility now. Like, maybe we can actually do something. I'm I'm generally at the camp where I'm just kind of thinking, like, long term. Is that I just think that 
for and again I, I i can barely speak on behalf of georgia right but i think that something that jersey's doing which i think maybe georgia can do is that just concentrating on the centers where you have large bases of voters and trying to get those people out to vote i think that's the only viable strategy for georgia um because like for for god's sakes like please i herschel walker is a very influential person for me oh, as a former student athlete but holy fuck herschel walker herschel please like and then there's like what's his name gary clark i think that old that, that i forget what he ran in georgia but it's like i i don't want to see that i don't i i don't want to see them lose to those two individuals but i don't know it's like as it's it's not it, it's possible and god damn if it happens it's gonna suck oh, I'm, I'm gonna be honest herschel walker is like close to god <laughs> in the state of Georgia. <laughs> that's the problem I, I, like uh, he and it's they love him so it's like it doesn't matter how like scorched earth he puts behind him if he gets trump backing which he did it's it, that might even be enough to just push him through like despite the fact that he's lied about his educational history which is weird because you're herschel fucking walker but it's like it was so know. dumb yeah i oh my god this guy is like major league <laughs> dumbass and like I, i'm bam uh, gonna... gary black is what i'm thinking of um I'm... he used to he was the agriculture bam, bam right i think what'd you say I didn't hear you. It, it's like yeah, gary black i think is the other front runner i'm off like just thinking off the top of my head but yeah it's yeah, like, yeah. He, he's a farmer like he, like he has position. a chance of winning like he has a clear chance of winning but herschel walker's chances are way too or higher than i i wish they were like it's like god I, I don't I don't know. It's like uh, what were you saying, Prime? <laughs> oh, I was gonna blame Bam and his people uh if they allow her to walk. But I'm trying, I'm yeah, trying to get out like Marjorie Taylor Green. My, my to answer to answer your question, Ty, I think it's just like concentrating on urban centers and really pushing that. Because like one of the things like even in Virginia, which is like crazy, like the like the parents were considering like a win. Like we elected Glenn Youngkin and it's like you still got your backs broken in the areas that Glenn Youngkin like focused on for the gubernatorial race. So it's like it's I don't know. It's like I feel like Democrats have to like double down on their on the centers that they have to try to like yeah. to get it. Oh, okay. And I yeah. use my girlfriend. No, I use my no, girlfriend to keep wrong. up with like what a polit like what the average person does. My girlfriend is completely a polit. She knows nothing. So like when whenever like no Herschel like, Walker though. Yeah, she does know Herschel Walker. <laughs> but whenever whenever like it was like oh you know grownups just figure out things. It's not this, it's not this, that it's impossible for an adult to figure out the process of registering to vote. It's the level of like I said. There's a threshold of like oh yeah voting is probably a good thing like. How yeah, should I do it? Stop. And then you get on the computer and you're like, ah, this feels like a lot. Like, this is complicated. I got to go to work in the morning. And you don't. But and but it's not just because they don't give a F. It's because they were never taught to give a F. They were, like I said, there's a, there's a big we educational gap. To give a F. What do you yeah, I, I'm, I'm in the, I don't know what stage you're from. But no, I'm telling you, just, the state like, of, we aren't born because we're American. We don't like, just because we're American, we're born American. We don't just like love democracy. But I'm saying I'm saying that if they're an adult, right, and they they want to influence the government and they know they don't know that, that they influence voting, the government. Hold on, <laughs> but like, they know they know that voting is where they do that, right? That's no, why they don't know that because wait, hold on, they don't know what voting does? No, that's what I'm saying. I'm literally saying okay, that then then maybe the people maybe your girlfriend's just a fucking idiot because I think most people, oh. even people who don't vote, know that if you vote, you're intending to influence okay. the government. Chad, what were you saying? Yeah, so, um, <laughs> great way to get off this. Um, so you're not wrong in or that. You like, can just if Democrats want to win, do be shut the fuck up. Oh my it's god. Bait. It's just bait. It's just bait. Like, it's we, bait. we know what we're right. You're not wrong. I'm you're not, not wrong in that Democrats. Oh, I, I, can I just mute Doobie? Like, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Hold on. So, what do you think oh these people god. think they're doing that, when they vote? That's, that's so, so what, what's awesome. a vote for? Okay. Right. So, uh, Joe, you're not wrong in that Democrats. They need to focus on urban areas. They need to focus on their demographics, their voters, in order to actually get out a sort of win in the election. But that's what's also stabbing them in the back. Right. Because as Tiberius said before, 
they're not focusing on the rural areas in which that's where the republicans they're they're getting a number of districts there like whole ass districts for the house of Rep representatives and they're also able to get the rural states in which that nets them two senate seats so like yeah sure democrats they're able to get new york they're able to get california which it has like so much more people than other states but when it comes to the senate it all evens out it doesn't matter how many people you actually have in a state so like that's also killing them there so like yeah, all, all what this what this goes back to is the problem with first past the post because it incentivizes your party to focus on getting more votes than the other party but it's at some point the strategy is going to be coming at the detriment of your of your long-term voter base of like you're neglecting other parts whereas if it was just all proportional representation it doesn't matter if you're only able to get 40 percent. it doesn't even fucking matter if you're able to get 10 percent in one district that 10 percent is going to net you some seats if it's a proportional representation multi-member districts and like when when you when you implement that system all of a sudden you don't have to really care about the demographic problem yeah. all of a sudden you don't have to care about the geographic problem of like rural versus urban because like if i'm gonna be a democrat in a rural area my vote is still going to count just as much as anybody else's because it's all based on a percentage if i'm gonna be a republican voter in the state of new york and if the electoral votes were actually divided out as like proportional to the vote then my vote is actually gonna fucking matter even though there's goddamn new york city down there that's like full of liberals so like at the end of the day all of my hate goes towards first past the post it is such a all shitty system when it comes to like any sort of a democracy i'm sorry like, i'm sorry i'm sorry i'm sorry i'm pulling the will smith in real time this is this is happening i thought i wasn't gonna take oh. the bait i wasn't gonna take the bait i'm pulling the will smith right here actually uh, legitimately like you can say whatever you want about me i sign up for this platform like i i step up here we can do that but don't talk about people that, that didn't sign up for this that's all i'm gonna say doopy that the more i can't that's do a slap fine. virtually so, so people so people who are like your girlfriend who don't know what voting does what do you think they think they're doing when they vote that's fine. I can say I, I'm not. I'm, I'm know, actually not even engaged right then. I'm, I'm, I'm not that's engaged fine. right now. They, they just think voting's a thing you do for no reason, okay. of course. Yeah, they I'll never. I said my piece. I said my piece. I can't virtually slap. Yeah, they just don't uh, know. They don't know if I'm. Hey, hey, calling somebody stupid for like not knowing how to vote isn't actually going to get them to vote. That's not it's what I said. Unproductive. It's very. It's, unproductive. it's not about not knowing how to vote. It is such a flawed. The claim was they don't know. They don't know if they don't know how to vote. The claim was they don't know what voting does. Now that they don't know how to care about how to vote. I got three. I got three minutes. Like all that you got, and you're still not following. Do you care about dunking on a person? Do you care about dunking on a person? The claim was they don't know what voting does. That if they Vote, they don't know what that vote does. And, and then because I there's said a large that, percentage of people that... that so no, your I'm priority is to dunk on that. Okay, 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 okay. Bam, That's all you care bam, about. Bam, you just bam, care about oh, dunking on people. Bam. I get it. That's your oh, whoa, 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 whoa. I'm talking. Bam, you can respond. Mm -hmm. There's a, but I'm saying there's a large portion of people who, who uh, on this app, on everywhere day in real life, they they say that like, oh yeah, I vote, nothing changes, blah blah blah. We got Obama elected, nothing happened. We got um, Biden elected, why aren't all these things happen? This isn't just isn't some like off branch of the population. These are regular people who went to school. They they um, put in their work. They see what's happening with the system, so they think that like, oh, okay, this isn't a necessary step to take. Like uh, obviously y'all are trying it. It's not working out. What am I gonna add to it? Because I thought y'all got the person that you wanted elected and it seems like that didn't fix everything that okay. it, so it's so not that they don't know what voting does it's they think their vote doesn't like doesn't affect anything it doesn't matter because things keep going on as they are it's like me in california right i when i want to vote for a republican or conservative or i don't like the whatever more on the, the democrats pushing for it doesn't fucking matter no matter which way i vote the guy's gonna win because he's a democrat in california so i don't i don't, I don't need to vote most of the time right it doesn't doesn't affect me and that's right. why so, proportional but that, but again, that is, is a so different based. claim than the one you made earlier. I'm glad that's you the exact that. same claim that I made. No, it I'm is not. That, you, okay. you, said, you said this specifically you said. voting. You said specifically like uh, you asked me like, oh, so they don't know what yeah. voting does, and I responded, not really, because they think that uh, they. Why would I need to add to a vote? Because you said you told me this is the person that needs to win. You voted that person's elected, and it doesn't seem like things are changing. So I don't really understand what voting does in this regard. Like, what what does me voting? That just means that they're 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 either losing the elections of the voting. In, or the person that they voted for isn't doing the thing you, they thought. You don't have to explain it to me. I'm saying that this, there's a large population. Well, I, I think, I think if, a per, if an adult, 
vote can suss that out, that very simple explanation on their own, again, they probably shouldn't be voting. They probably shouldn't be driving cars because they're fucking stupid. Okay. Bam, okay. Bam, okay. Like, so, what, well, uh, come on. I'm going to give you your uh, what thing you're looking for, Joe Lewis. Sure. Um, so, uh, to my audience. Um, oh! <laughs> my audience, this is for you. <laughs> uh, to my audience, uh, thank you for being here. We are going to continue on to our open walk on panel right after this. We're going to have more content for you and i want to continue with a few of our lines of inquiry here um so uh, stick around for that open panel where you can participate so stick around um for that so we have more content right after this um hit that follow button right now if you haven't done so yet if you found any of this content interesting right or infuriating one or the other uh both work for me hit that follow button right now mission is on so you know i'm going live i do this seven nights a week either here or on um uh youtube right x mission with social and chat for our social media, we got your um, uh, Discord, uh, we got your Twitter, and we got your YouTube. Check us out there. Uh, like, comment, subscribe on YouTube. Consider becoming a YouTube member, hitting that join button. I'm going to start that way. All right. I'm going to give an outro to all these uh, amazing individuals. Uh, we'll actually start with Joe Lewis, because I know Joe Lewis has a heart out. Um, so, uh, yeah. Joe Lewis, thank you uh, so much for kindly joining us and being part of this. Joe Lewis, tell the world about yourself. Yeah, no, th this was fun. I miss arguing on the internet, okay? it's I love the toxic content I'm covering on my channel right now at twitch.tv slash doomadamu, but it's fun to it's fun to argue on the internet on the panel. It's been a it's been a minute. Um to to Bam's to to what Bam was knocking at, and I guess I'll make that part of my closing, is that like one of the things and one of the reasons why my district, my school district, can herald that among graduating seniors, the voter turnout for that base is over 90%. It's because my district had a conscious and dedicated effort to make sure that the students that they bring out of that community understand what they need to do civically and what their civic duties are. So they push voting very hard in my district in the in the political capacity that they can because there are restrictions there. They, they push being able to be a driver, an individual who can drive a vehicle so there's a driver's ed testing and pushing making sure that you, you will pass the driver's ed test through hell or high water because you live in the suburbs and having a car is a statistical disadvantage so that's very much pushed and there's a community of people who want to make sure that students are politically involved and actively politically involved like not this not like the problem in a lot of like areas like in georgia and otherwise where it's like you kind of like find out about the process through happenstance because you start like caring about things around you. I think that we just need to do a better job at getting people more actively involved before they become adults, legal adults at 17 or 18, depending on your state. Um, but yeah, this was fun. Um, and maybe, maybe I'll come do it again. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. I will harass you until you do. Um, Joe Lewis, shout out to you. Um, and everyone got your channel, uh, Duma, uh, Dama, right? Correct. Um, yeah, Jim Adamus. Jim Adamus, excuse me. Um, yes, please check out his channel. Joe Lewis does good content, and he's always out there causing trouble on Twitter and <laughs> whatnot, apparently. I'm reformed. Mm -hmm. It's it's Sansol now, okay? Okay, all right. <laughs> uh, but much appreciated, buddy. Okay, uh, let's move on to uh, my man, Bam, Black American Maid. Uh, Bam, you did your best. You did your very best. I can see you, buddy. You tried your very best not to have a terrible take. Um, uh, you... <laughs> <laughs> it didn't quite succeed, but you you did your best, and I appreciate you. Uh, so. I'll, I'll, I'll pray tonight to my my prime poster and go <laughs> for it tomorrow. Um, no, uh, I could almost say this was fun. Um, all a lot lots of interesting takes. I actually like just looking at the um, panel of people. I was like, oh wow, this is like nobody was like in nobody was really insane. There was like takes that I disagree with, but like. Everybody was, we were in some realm of um, sanity, which I could respect. So, oh yeah, always fun. We are in the realm of sanity. Wow, we have improved. <laughs> we're, we're all in the realm of sanity. High five, guys. <laughs> we're all in the realm of sanity. Okay. <laughs> High praise, seriously, for this channel. All right, Jay Chow, right? Uh, a person I'm excited to have on my in my community all the time. Uh, Jay Chow, thanks for coming through and being a part of all of this. Hope you enjoyed yourself. Yeah, it was enjoyable. Uh, really excited to talk about first past the post, two party system, more partial representation. That's one of the issues that I care about. Uh, the reason why I care about that is because I study political science and international relations, and I care about democracy and how a system does incentivize some things, and how we could change that system so that we could have a better democracy. 
Uh, you can find me at twitch.tv slash jchildlive. I talk about uh, education, political science, and all that stuff. Ask any questions, do debates here and there, such as this. Uh, yeah, check me out. Okay. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, also, we have uh, my man, Immersed uh, Dionysus, uh, who uh, is also a great, fantastic mod uh, uh, who helps out in our community. Thank you for coming through and uh, sharing your opinions, and especially being a like, more passionate about um uh amazon than i would have given you credit for um but i'm very glad you were here uh it was a lot of fun miss the reveries it's good to be back um yeah uh if you guys want to follow me and what i do uh twitter is dionysus underscore yt uh, a lot of gaming shit a lot of political shit a lot of just life shit um other than that it was a lot of fun i'll probably be on the panel after i eat something so come argue Thank you, thank you. Got to recharge those batteries before you like uh, start um, uh, throwing uh, elbows at uh, leftists, right? Um, so thanks so much. <laughs> All right, let's go to um, Wick. Wick, Death of Serenity, um, who's always seriously, just a reliable guy, really kind guy. Guys, you should be checking out his content. He's like blowing up over there on uh, his channel, right? He's got a fantastic, he's got a fucking fantastic. Um, uh, uh, now is everyone leaving? Don't leave. Uh, <laughs> he's got <laughs> rude. Don't leave. Um, he's got an absolute fantastic co-host um, that he has. Right, one of my favorite people. Um, so, uh, Wick, a little about yourself. Well, uh, as uh, Prime so aptly pointed out, you can find me at twitchtv death at certainty. If you like my takes, great. If you hate my takes, that's also great. Um, I try to build a community. I'm trying to build a community where we could have disagreements but still uh without eating each other as eyeballs and hating each other afterwards and to a large extent i'm, I'm succeeding and so please come on uh join join that uh my discord's always popping uh even late into the night we always got people arguing about something uh it's real fun uh tomorrow kelly marie unfortunately can't make it for my co-host she's her microphone broke she's getting a new one so we're gonna have a replacement co-host a guest co-host just for that day but she will be back next week i do an open call in shows on tuesdays where you can call in and tell me why i'm a terrible person that's always fun um thursdays uh i have an interview segment i do and this week we're going to be interviewing a witch uh witchy baby who does tarot readings so we're going to find out all about that and then Friday, I'm hosting the Toontown Showdown between Flowtrace and Section. And they will be arguing about something fun. It'll be fun. But come check me out. Give me a follow. It's free. Uh, and yeah, and uh, come on the open. I'll be on for a little bit uh, just to let you yell at me directly for my bad takes here. But yeah, thank you. Okay, so uh, Kayla Marie is not going to be there tomorrow. I take back everything I said. Like, avoid that channel like the fucking plague, right? There's no value in it anymore. Um, but thank you so much, <laughs> Wick. All right, my next Tiberius D. Thank you, Tiberius. Thank you for uh, uh, for being. You were uh, super passionate about both of these topics, which is <laughs> really nice to see. Um, yeah, but always good to hear your opinion, whether I agree with it or not. I really appreciate it. Um, and man, like I, I I try to be as passionate as I could, but also in the fact it's just like God damn, I'm tired. I got responsibilities and shit, and I'm just I'm I'm grinding real hard. But um, number one. Prime, always a pleasure to be on you. I try to, you know, uh, roll in the open panels when I can. Very rare. Uh, I do love the reverie because it's a little bit more controlled, and I always thank you for inviting me on. Uh, but also, you bring some really good folks. I love talking to Jim Chow, particularly on the, or not only just in general, but also uh, on the reverie because uh, he's kind of like my intellectual equal, and it's always fun to see, like, you know, us kind of clash or if we agree. Uh, Joe Lewis is always fantastic. Uh, please keep inviting him. And uh, last username, dude, you are the star of Lee. And I, I'm loving it, man. Absolutely loving it. Good to see you again. Um, hopefully we can uh, have you stop by my show a, a little bit. Uh, what's he paying you? I'll double it. Uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, without further ado, my name is Tiberius D. I studied in economics and political science. And uh, I'm kind of center right. I, I have my weird takes where I'm not. I'm, everyone hates me i'll just put it that way uh but you're all wrong and so if you want to find out why you're all wrong come check me out on the mask off podcast or just on my channel whether it be twitch or youtube there's plenty of things that you can check out and that's for everything from politics to economics to geopolitics but also fun things i do such as the mask off podcast or my reviews where you can find out why william t Riker is such a wonderful character because we love star trek over here and Gundam, and Star Wars, and all the other stuff. So there's plenty of things for you to either love me for, hate me for, or a little bit of both, because that's always the love-hate relationships. 
anyway thank you so much i really appreciate it guys thank you thank you uh jay chow um intellectual equal i am sorry tiberius gave you such a vicious insult right i'll have him apologize <laughs> later on no, and, um, and then goes on to say that and does and i don't get invited to one of his shows like at <laughs> least gives me something um get over here <laughs> Yeah, uh, and to check out uh, Tiberius, he likes all the fun stuff, right? Um, so, uh, all right, thank you so much. Um, next we have last user name. I call on this guy all the time, right? Why? Because he's a lot of fun, right? Uh, and he's good to argue against, right? Um, by good I mean like I, it's like a brick wall, but uh, <laughs> he's amazing. Um, one of my honestly, of one truth. of my favorite people, <laughs> wall of truth, <laughs> one of my favorite people to have on, and he didn't disappoint. So thank you so much, last year's name. Yeah, man, always good to be here. Um, you guys can see I love talking about economics, democracy. I love talking about how democracy uh, is overrated. Um, but like the details of like how to fiddle with democracy and make it better. I don't know. It's like what color lipstick to put on the pig. Uh, it just doesn't really get me going, but that's cool. If other people like talking about that. Um, if you want to hear more, uh, me talking about stuff, um, check out my YouTube channel. It's econarchy uh, right there on YouTube. I think you have to search for it. Cause I don't have like a nice URL yet. Mm -hmm. Here's the link actually. Boom. Uh, or last underscore username on Twitch. Sometimes I stream, although I'm not doing that right now because uh, I couldn't uh, mess with it. Anyway, um, good to be here. And uh, you're all wrong. And uh, But I love you all anyway. So um, I got to go feed this cat or it's going to eat me. Okay. So I got to bounce. But uh, yeah, have a good night, everyone. Thank you so much. All right. Last but not least, our dark lord and savior. His name is Doobie. Uh, Doobie uh, comes in with the hot takes. Uh, Doobie comes in uh, with... Uh, <laughs> with the ability to uh, get the crowd going, right? One way or the other, right? Uh, either the cheers or booze, he, he can manage it. Um, so thank you, DB, for coming through, um, like you usually do. And it's just, uh, I, I keep calling you back because it's always good talking to you. So thanks, DB. Yeah, thanks for uh, inviting me. Um, and uh, I, I've, I've been avoiding this the entire panel. I was going to say it earlier. At the start, and I kind of got a little stage fright because it's really it's fresh. And it's hard. Um, but yesterday, I was robbed of a debate win um, on the DGG Raw thing that Prime's been running because the judges were racist, homophobic, and were too high to follow the discussion. So, just FYI, um, yeah, the the guys from DGG are racist. Okay, I love you guys. Bye -bye. <laughs> yeah, uh, that was. Uh, brutal like i voted for you um i think you were robbed okay it's okay yeah i was yeah it was bad it's yeah fun. uh let's do better let's do better by our fog friends by our mexican mexican pals all right um thank I'm you american fuck you what the fuck okay all right well whatever <laughs> sure um everyone uh thanks so much for being here we're going to continue on to open walk on panel um anyone here uh wants to join us can um but if not that's okay thanks you spend your time your energy your knowledge and your passion my community i know they appreciate you so much as i do have a good one bye <laughs>